Hey everybody, so in this video I'm going to be going over the Easy Web Challenge Water Snake from the 2023 Hack the Box Business CTF. Uh, cliff Notes if you're just here because you want to know what you're supposed to do. We are going to exploit a deserialization vulnerability in the Snake YAML package and use that to get remote code execution and get ourselves the flag that way. So um, I downloaded the source code, here it is. I, I kind of wish I'd done this as sort of a first time through video, like how I've done in some of the other ones, because I feel like this would have been a really good one to do it on, because this is using um, uh, Spring Framework, which is a like a Java web application, and I literally have zero uh, experience. I don't, I don't even know if I've ever seen any of that before, um, any of the things I've done. So it would have been like a good way to show like what to do when, you know, what you're working on is unfamiliar. And with a web application, it's just the basic fundamentals. Find the user input and follow the code and work Google because that's exactly how I got the flag here, even though I don't really fully understand, uh, you know, even well, I mean, I guess I understand, but like, I don't know. I don't really know what's going on all that well. Um, but if we kind of a, the basic things, like my thought process was, so the flag is getting sent to, it's just being copied into the root directory. And I, you know, I went through all the code and the only place where there's any kind of user input is um, we can make a post request to this update uh, endpoint, and we see it is taking a input string or input stream and it loading it into this uh, whatever this YAML is, and it's converting that to uh, or you know it's, it's a dictionary of key values, uh, and then it's just essentially just printing out the keys and the values, and that's kind of it. So. You know, I went through all the code and, you know, our goal is to get the flag, right? So like figuring out what you would want to do if you, you know, were omnipotent and could do anything, you know, like if it's in the cookie, like, oh, okay, give me the cookie. If it's in the database, oh, okay, let me have access to the database. Like nowhere do they do anything with the flag. So it's just sitting there in the root directory. So that makes me think, okay, we need to find some kind of remote code execution. Um, so literally all I did was, you know, work to Google's. I literally, all I did was type in YAML, um, RCE spring framework, right? Thinking, okay, well, we're going through this YAML function. We need remote code execution and we're using spring. So, you know, what, What, what turns up and you know, right there at the top is unsafe deserialization vulnerability and snake YAML, which, you know, instead of typing YAML in my search, I should have done snake YAML, but um, we'll see right away. We get this uh, RCE, it's CVE of 2022. So it's pretty recent, which is a good sign. You know, a lot of challenges um, are created. Just the creator finds a, you know, cool or interesting CVE and makes a challenge around it. And it's much more likely that this is going to be the right path if it's a, you know, recent-ish CVE as opposed to like, you know, 2014 or something. Uh, if we look at the versions, I think somewhere it'll say that it's in version 1.3 plus. And if we look at where it is in here, I forget which file it is because again, I don't really uh, no Java web apps. It is, I believe we're using 1.33 or something. So that, that all lines up like perfectly. Um, so just doing a little bit more Googling, you know, reading about the CVE, there's a bunch of um, good blogs that kind of explain it. Um, and then we get, oops, uh, we get to this site. site. We see there is a GitHub repo that basically tells us, you know, exactly what to do, kind of sets it up for us. Um, and all this kind of makes sense if you read kind of what's going on in the blogs, or, you know, the blog post ex explaining it. Um, 
I'll leave some links to a couple of the ones I found that were good uh, in the description if you're interested. Oh, oops, not that I want this. So essentially, we're just going to clone this repo and then follow the instructions. This is the user input that we're sending to the server. Uh, we want to use a URL that we can control. So the server is going to go out, download this jar and execute it. Um, and so what we want to do then is it tells us to put the Java code we want to execute in this, compile it with these commands and then put the jar file in the thing. So essentially we're just gonna, you know, be good little script kitty and copy and paste and do exactly what we're told. And that should lead us to the flag. So, um, let's go ahead and clone the repo. Um, and so if we do what it said, which was, I believe, we want to put the code that we want run on the server in here. Now, so normally the first thing you might think of is like, oh, let's do like a reverse shell or, you know, with netcat or something. Now, you're not really going to find netcat on something like this because Again, it's a Docker, so they're just it's like the absolute bare basic minimum you need to run. Um, maybe there's some like Java uh, reverse shells we could do, uh, but I didn't feel like Googling that because I don't you know know any. So I, it's like the simplest way I, I thought, because curl is going to be on everything, is we'll just send ourselves the file. Um, oops. Now we want to send it somewhere we can control. Now. The initial thing that we're gonna have the server connect to, uh, I'm gonna use uh, ngrok for, and since I just have the free ngrok, um, I can only have one, one tunnel open at a time. So I'm gonna open the one on port 80, but I need another site, another place I have control to. So, I'll just use webhook. Um, so we'll just have it essentially make a post request to this webhook to upload this flag and I'll get to see it here. Um, that's the code we're gonna have it execute on the server. So we just follow the instructions on this site. Um, tells us to Essentially just gonna copy and paste. Uh, it says do this. And then it says do this. And then it said to move the file it creates into this directory. So we need to, I have a tunnel open to my computer but we need to um, open a, so I'm just gonna do a simple Python HTTP server to serve that file. So now if we tell it to, well, I guess, actually have to go to the site at some point so let's go Oops. Um, let's go to the site and if i remember right it's we access it via update um, let's just put some gibberish in so that i can get it into burp There we go, we'll send that over to repeater. And so this isn't valid YAML, so that's why this is messing up, because if we look at the code, um, again, we're essentially loading, loading the YAML into that, and it's mapping it to a dictionary, so it's keys and values. So we can't just send, um, Get that 
stupid site. We can't just send this. We need to. Right, we need to make it a valid YAML, like a key value pair. So we'll do that. And then we want to use an endpoint I can control, which is this. Open that up. So this is going to be the YAML that gets run through this function. Um, and when it creates the object, um, it's exploiting that vulnerability, deserialization vulnerability with this, um, code, which is telling it to go to this, which will direct it to my, uh, HTTP TP simple server so that it can get this jar file to execute this code, which will send the flag from the root directory to the webhook site that I can control. Um, so we see it hit the server, it got the YAML. Um, and if we go to the webhook, we see there was a post request sent from the server with that flag. So yeah, uh, essentially, just focusing on the basics that you know how to do, even if it's working in something you don't know, and essentially just Google. Google's the single most important skill or tool you have at your disposal. Um, it, you know, and then it helps to read the stuff and try and kind of understand it because you know one of the problems you could have get over this stupid site is, you know, just not understanding what's going on in the code um, that it's doing. Cause in the blogs, all the examples they give, it's not doing it to a dictionary. It's just directly doing it to an object. So you do have to recognize and understand like, oh, okay, it's doing a dictionary here. So we need to modify it a little bit. Um, and that's, to me, that's the mark of a good challenge too, is like, just the, even just sometimes the tiniest little tweaks so that you can't just blindly do things um, is the difference between, you know, g gaining some understanding and, and not. Um, anyway, now I'm just essentially rambling. Um, so yeah, that's uh, this challenge. And if you're still here listening to this, I hope you got something good out of it. And if you did, uh, please consider liking or subscribing or any of that stuff everyone always asks you to do on YouTube. And yeah, thanks.